Times NBA players dunk too hard. There are plenty of fans who watch basketball because they have a passion for the game and love how it's played. Then there are the casual fans who enjoy basketball because of the slam dunks and nice plays that can be seen throughout a game. The casual fans love a slam dunk, but ultimately, they can't get enough of a slam dunk that breaks a backboard or a rim. Not too long ago, the Houston Rockets lost a basketball game due to a missed dunk by James Harden. The ball went in the net, but looked like it didn't because he threw it down too hard. Now players are contemplating whether to slam dunk it hard to show off for the fans or just lay it in and get two points to make sure their coaches and team are happy. Keep watching for the times the NBA players dunk too hard in a basketball game. James Harden Not too long ago, James Harden went for an uncontested dunk. The ball literally went to the basket, but then due to the fundamental law of physics, the ball popped out of the hoop. The ball went through the hoop, but spun upward back to the top of the rim. It bounced twice before hitting away from the rim. Therefore, it looked like the dunk was a missed shot. How do you do that? But reality was that the ball clearly passed through the hoop before bouncing out again. The ruling in the court was no basket. The Rockets were in disbelief and coach Mike D protested and tried to challenge the call. He was denied and the Rockets actually lost that game by two points in double overtime. After one of the most strange and bizarre plays in the NBA in recent memory, those two points prevented the Rockets from winning this game. When the play happened, Harden goes for the dunk and then the ball appears to us to pop back through the net. James Cappers, one of the referees said, when that happens, that is basket interference. To have a successful field goal, it must clear the net. Then he added, we've since come in here and looked at the play. He dunked it so hard that the net carried it back over the rim a second time. So in fact, it did clear the net and should have been a successful field goal. Cappers also said that the play couldn't be reviewed since the 30 second window for challenges passed while Rockets were protesting. I heard that they said the ball hit James and went back through, so it was a goal tend on James. DeAnthony told reporters after the game, then another guy said it wasn't goaltend, but it went out of bounds on us. The Rockets played angry after the missed field goal. Houston were up 102-89 at the time of the dunk, and yet became so frustrated that they ended up blowing the lead. Brian Forbes of the Spurs missed the potential game winner at the end of regulation, and Harden had a chance to win it in the first overtime and missed. The Spurs ended up winning the game on two free throws, with no time left on the clock by Lonnie Walker. Harden scored 50 on the night, but should have had 52 if the dunk would have counted. Harden really didn't have his best game, even with 50 points on the board, as he shot .289 from the floor and had 4 for 20 on his three-pointers. Although the Rockets protested the game, the NBA has never and likely would never change their call or replay the game off a missed call. It's happened way too often, and they couldn't decide just to change it for one play. On December 9th, the NBA said it had disciplined the three officials who botched the call in its aftermath by not allowing the Rockets to challenge it, but that it was denying Houston's protest. In a statement by Commissioner Adam Silver, it said the Rockets had sufficient time to overcome the error during the remainder of the four quarters and subsequent two overtime periods, and thus the extraordinary remedy of granting a game protest was not warranted. In 2008, the Miami Heat and Atlanta Hawks, you remember this game, replayed the last 51 seconds of the overtime game because Shaquille O'Neal was incorrectly fouled out. The Hawks had already won the original game by six. In the replay, the Hawks also won, but by three points, as neither team scored in those final seconds. What was funny about this situation was that O'Neal had been traded away prior to the restart and was available to play anyway because he was on a new team. Shaquille O'Neal Shaquille O'Neal is easily one of the best centers to ever play in the NBA. The Hall of Famer played for 19 seasons and won multiple awards and championships along with many accolades. Shaq was a big-time dunk and knew how to tear the rim down. Thanks to his size and build, most defenders would have trouble guarding him, especially in the paint. O'Neal dunked with authority every time he had the chance. One time he dunked so hard that he broke the backboard in an NBA game. He literally brought down the rim with him. When O'Neal was playing in his rookie season with the Orlando Magic in the 92-93 season, he already became a top player in the league as a rookie. In that season, he won the Rookie of the Year award and was named the NBA All-Star Team. That's hard to do as a rookie. Anyway, during the regular season game on April 23rd, 93, playing against the New Jersey Nets, O'Neal got the ball in the paint, made one dribble, and threw it down with authority, of course. He threw the ball down so hard, he actually took the rim down, too, with him. After dunking, O'Neal just calmly walked off the court as if nothing had happened, while the entire backboard and rim was on the hardwood. 
The game had to be delayed for a solid period of time as the court crew had to bring a new rim out. It's not normal regardless of the player, but when a young rookie comes into the league and does that, you're going to bring a wider audience to people who are really intrigued. Shaq's dunk was the talk of the game. It was the talk of the season, and it's still the talk right now. O'Neal's dunk had everyone from the players to the coaches to the fans in absolute awe. The game finally resumed, but so many were still astonished with what they had witnessed. Shaq had so much power where he was able to bring down an entire rim down off of a dunk. The Magic won, but O'Neal only finished with 10 points, 5 rebounds, and 5 blocks. But that didn't matter. He had the play of the night easily. His teammate, Nick Anderson, had a career-like game for the Magic, but that wasn't ever talked about. Only the dunk was talked about. Anderson came off the bench and finished with 50 points, shooting 17-25 from the field with Magic. Anderson's performance helped the Magic win over the Nets. So many forgot about Anderson's performance because Shaq's dunk was heard around the world. Shaq had an impressive rookie season, however. At the time of the dunk, Shaq was just getting into the flow of the NBA, and he was adjusting well. After starting out playing in all 81 games in his rookie season, he finished averaging 23.4 points, 13.9 rebounds, and 3.5 blocks per game. Those don't look like rookie stats if you ask me. Soon, O'Neal would become a fan favorite and one of the most talked about players in the league. There weren't any big men in the NBA at the time with the size and strength that O'Neal has, let alone the skill level. Daryl Dawkins Daryl Dawkins set a trend for high school players who wanted to go right into the NBA. Players like LeBron James couldn't come out of high school if it wasn't for Daryl Dawkins. Daryl Dawkins began his professional basketball career in 1975 for the Philadelphia 76ers. At 6'10", at 260, he was a self-proclaimed chocolate thunder. This allowed him to set himself apart from the rest of the league because he was an absolute entertainer. Dawkins made dunk history by shattering the backboard and tearing down the rim in a spectrum against the San Antonio Spurs yet another team that had a controversial dunk against the Spurs. Dawkins was born and raised in Orlando, Florida, where he was the star of his high school basketball team. He was probably the best high school basketball player and one of the best people I've ever met, said his high school coach, Fred Pennington. Dawkins decided to go straight to the NBA rather than attend college. He entered the draft and was chosen by the Sixers and in with the fifth overall draft pick. In his rookie season, Dawkins didn't see much action as he started to develop his game even more. Daryl started to seize his playing time during the 77-78 season when he played alongside another dunking legend in Julius Irving, along with Doug Collins. In World Be Free, he averaged 25 minutes per game, scoring 11 points and bringing down 7 rebounds per game. Chocolate Thunder made history. In his third season with the Sixers, Daryl started to become known for his furious slam dunks. He would give his dunk names because that's just the guy he was. Some of his dunks were named the In Your Face Disgrace, Look Out Below, The Rim Wrecker, Gorilla, Spine Chiller Supreme, Cover Your Head, Yo Mama, the list goes on, Get Out of the Way, Backboard Swing, Game Delay, and my personal favorite, If You Ain't Grooving, You Best Get Moving, Dunk. Dawkins had some sense of humor, as you can tell. Against the Kansas City Kings in November 1979, Dawkins went in for a dunk against Bill Robazine and made history by shattering the backboard on one of his dunks. The first thing I was thinking was, man, I gotta get out of here. All this glass coming down. I was like, feet don't fail me now, exclaimed Dawkins. After this dunk, about a month later, he did it again at the Spectrum against the San Antonio Spurs on December 5th, 1979. This time he did it with even more damage. He broke the backboard and pulled down the rim which included the bolts in all. Dawkins recalled, I moved in, attacked the basket, and boom, the whole rim came down. Daryl Dawkins is the only player in the NBA to break two backboards in a month in one single season, and will more than likely always be the only one to achieve this feat. The NBA commissioner at the time, Larry O'Brien, was not happy about the backboards breaking. O'Brien asked Dawkins into his office and told that every time he broke a backboard, he owed the league $5,000. Because of Dawkins, basketball rims are made to be collapsible and backboards are made of shatterproof materials in order to protect the backboard and players from breakage. Michael Jordan Michael Jordan finished his rookie season with the Chicago Bulls in 1985. After the season, he boarded an international flight for a Europe tour with Nike, his new sponsor. Jordan was pictured posing with the Eiffel Tower in Paris and even held a training session with young players in London. Jordan was also seen around Trieste in northeast Italy. There, he played in an exhibition game with two local Italian teams. Many people don't know about this, but one of his most entertaining moments came at this time. Jordan's fame was on the rise after his rookie season. Even people in Italy were taking notice. 
Jordan had already helped North Carolina win the NCAA championship in 1982 and had won a gold medal in the Los Angeles Olympics in the USA team in 1984. Of course, Jordan was named Rookie of the Year with the Bulls and was releasing his first Air Jordan shoes during the offseason. In Italy, Jordan put on a Stefanel Trias jersey for an expedition game. In the game, he scored 30 points. Jordan was at the peak of his ability at the time with a crazy vertical and also incredible agility to get up in the air. Late in the expedition game, Jordan attacked the basket in transition and took off for a dunk. He dunked the ball so hard that he shattered the backboard. He watched the glass fall everywhere as the game was paused to clean it up. You can even watch highlights of this dunk on YouTube. They have the highlights of that game and Jordan's performance in the game. Jordan brand vice president Howard White told the story of what it was like to see the play happen in person. Glass was everywhere. The backboard exploded. I'm looking at his eyes, his ears, looking for little bits of glass, remembers Howard White, VP of Jordan brand. In the moment, it was wild. It was a little scary because we didn't know where the glass was going. They were playing and then there was that moment. I don't know of any moment where one can detect something otherworldly has happened, but that one has become something grand. For MJ though, it was just a moment in the game. Jordan has had some of the most iconic memories and stories that we'll ever hear as basketball fans. He's had the shot over Elo. He's also got the shrug game. And then of course, the flu game. We also can't forget his final jumper with the Bulls, with hundreds more sprinkled in between. This dunk from Jordan in Italy was probably one of the most underrated highlights of Jordan's career that doesn't get talked about enough. Jordan literally took down a backboard and rim with his dunk after his rookie season, where he was getting extremely popular. Jordan was never the size of Shaq or Dawkins, but he was extremely strong throughout his entire body, including his legs, where he would be able to spring up and slam hard thanks to his agility and quickness, along with his vertical.